This is a tamarillo tree. G'day everyone. We're gonna have a look at planting a couple more of these because they're one of my favorite fruits. It's a subtropical large leaf plant and it has these egg sized um, and egg shaped bright red fruits which are quite tart but I really really like them. This is my semi mature tree growing in a large pot so they're really good in a pot and if we come in here we can see it's fruiting really well. And although it's documented as a small tree, uh, it does actually grow reasonable size. And we've got lots more fruit up here. It's growing along the edge of the patio and I'll sort of train it along there too. But because I like these, I've got two more that I've grown from seed. I'm gonna plant them over with my bananas or near my bananas in an area I hope to create a microclimate of subtropical plants. So let's get on with it. So these are the two Camarillos that I'm going to be putting in, both grown from seed. And as we can see, they're actually, they look like the different varieties. Um, could have come from two different seed batches. In one of my other videos, I said I was going to move these little uh, garden beds, but in this one's case, I'm not going to. I'm just going to clear it out, refurbish it with some LD soil, some manure, dynamic lifter, and pop them in here. I'm going to plant them very close together because I can shape them to suit the, uh, the size I want and keep them fairly short. So let's get this old collie out. Lift our irrigation out. And start topping it up. Also pull out my Kakadu plums that grow everywhere. Oh, look at all these earthworms in my sheep manure. So I'm not sure if that bed was set up for uh, blueberries or not. I don't think it was, but just to be absolutely certain, because we need a neutral sort of soil for tamarillos. I think I saw it was between five and a half and eight or nine, but I'll confirm that up here. Let's get our with me little stirring stick. What are you barking at, Roof? Again, it's all clogged up. Let's let that sit for a minute. A little bit of LD soil. Just to give it some body rather than potting mix. You'll notice I left the leaf litter there because I don't want to take that out. It's good for the garden. So let's spread this out. Try and dig it in without killing any earthworms, which could be difficult. A bit of dynamic lifter, we'll just spread that out and dig it through the surface. I was going to put some earthworm castings in here, but I don't think I'll bother with all of those earthworms save it for something else. As I said, I'm going to plant these fairly close together. You can plant them in a subtropical climate uh, only a meter apart, um, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. If the Kamajin camera person would like to take a little turn around that way, we can see that we've got, apart from mulberry tree, pawpaws. Bob the blueberry there, of course. Uh, we have the banana plantation and the black sapota up the back there. The black sapota is going to be nice and tall. I don't like it that tall, but I don't have any choice. 
So I'm hoping with the bananas, the tall uh, sapota tree, dwarf pawpaws, we'll end up with a low layer of uh, sort of semi-tropical subclimate down here. I'll get some ground cover in as well um, when I work out exactly what I want down there. So let's get the first one in. Look at that. These are not drought tolerant. They don't like drying out at all and they dry out very quickly. Don't they Rufus? Uh, and they also can't take any frost. So we'll be mulching this up fairly heavily. Okay, we'll put this fella in as well. It had some tomatoes that came up in there from the compost that I was using. So I'll just make sure they're not gonna grow because they'll steal all the nutrients. Yeah, right time to repot him. Don't want to break those roots up or damage it too much. It's a bit sensitive to root disturbance. Here we go. Now we'll get his stick. Hopefully they'll grow nicely. I'll give them a good watering, mulch them, and we'll see how we go. All right, this is our triple C. It's easy to put out. It's nicely shredded. It's got some chicken poop in it and a mix of corn and canola, I believe. But I like using this stuff. Okay, yeah, just leaving a spot around the base so we don't get the tree to rot. Take that out before I lose it. Right, just scatter a bit of NPK over the top to slowly work its way through. And there we go. I shall now water it in. So we can see he's quite large here. Uh, and I'm going to be, as I said, training it along the patio here. So how do you go about pruning them? Well, you don't at this time of year. It's uh, fruiting season, as we've seen, with the fruit up here, uh, and we don't prune it at this time. However, it's really important if it's gonna be out in a windy area, it's gotta be pruned back fairly short because it's not a strong wood. It's quite light and hollow in the middle, so it can't handle strong, strong breezes. So either keep it sheltered or keep it cut nice and short, otherwise it'll snap off. Now the pests, a lot of people say these don't suffer from pests, but they do. I've had aphids and scale and slugs, all kinds of things on this plant, but because it's a big leaf plant, pretty easy to take care of, very easy to see where they are and you can see it's got a few holes in it, but it's pretty sturdy. It doesn't get pests any more than anything else, but just keep an eye out for scale and aphids. Uh, and other bugs. One of the things you do have to watch for is is rot. Uh, that's what killed off my past ones. So uh, just keep an eye out for that. Keep a fungicide on it, definitely. Uh, but otherwise, they're pretty easy. What about fertilising, I hear you ask? Well, I don't hear you ask because you're on YouTube and I'm over here. But I'll tell you anyway. They're very hungry feeders. So we've got to keep the fertilisers and the food up to it, particularly when it's fruiting, like it is now, and give it a weekly feed of some uh, seaweed or fish emulsion or something, something worthwhile. Particularly, as I said, when it's fruiting, you can cut that right back in the winter. So what's a fruit taste like? I can't show you because they're not ready yet. But I tell you what, they are really nice. Some people describe them as a cross between a passion fruit and a tomato. I wouldn't agree with that. Very firm, jelly-like substance, small seeds, very tart, but I reckon they're worth growing because they're absolutely delicious. Back we go. So here we have my microclimate, or what I hope will be a microclimate. We have the tamarillos, Bob the blueberry, a white Genoa fig, four banana trees, there's a pecan down the back there, my sapota, and pawpaws all along the fence line. I think I have room for a potted mango right there. 
So we'll probably buy a little mango tree, put it into a big pot and put him in there and keep it nice and small. So what do you think? Is this microclimate going to work? Any experts on microclimates out there? Let me know in the comments. I'll keep you updated, but to know, you've got to subscribe and like. So please like and subscribe. Enjoy life. I'll catch you in the garden. Woohoo!